My camera just said three, two, one, so that must mean we're live. So hello, everybody. This is Jeff, and welcome to the Results Now Show. And I am so glad you're here. This live chat stuff, I'm, you know what I'm starting to call it? Live video casting. Live video casting. Doesn't that sound cool? It's taken off. Great things are happening. For those of you that are already in LiveVideoSecrets.com, you know how great this is. And just last week, Google starts to talk about how Google and YouTube are coming out with YouTube Connect. YouTube is getting in the game, just like we predicted, to compete with Periscope, Blab, and what you're seeing here, Facebook Live. So that tells you this is big stuff, folks, when all the big players get in. So welcome. And our topic today... A mindset topic is the seven favorite words of the perpetually unsuccessful. Yes, you heard that right. The seven favorite words of the perpetually unsuccessful. And you'll understand those in just a moment. Welcome, especially if you're here for the first time. Thank you for being a part of our show. I think you'll find that it's different than many of the other ones out there because we actually give you stuff you can use right away. What a concept. Mind blown, right? So, if you're one of our regulars or one of our irregulars, like Tim is an irregular that just joined us. Welcome, Tim. And Alicia as well. Uh, so glad you're here. So glad you're um, part of the ongoing community. Sometimes that'll happen, Alicia. And what you need to do is go out and come back in again. It's a little um, glitch that's going on with Facebook Live as they ramp up and they get they make improvements and that kind of thing. So go out, come back in again. That should take care of that. And if you're watching this on the replay, where were you? It's so much more fun live. And yet we're glad you're here. So thanks for being here. All right, so our quote for today's show comes from my buddy Al Einstein who said, no problem can be solved with the same level of consciousness that created it. No problem can be solved with the same level of consciousness or the same level of thinking that created it. And that speaks very, very highly to what we're going to talk about today, about mindset, the seven favorite words of the perpetually unsuccessful. Now, for today, now, the seven favorite words of the perpetually unsuccessful unsuccessful. Do you have a pen to write these words down? Do you have your keyboard ready to write these words down? Okay, Because here they are, the seven favorite words of the perpetually unsuccessful. Here they are. We've always done it that way before. We've always done it that way before. People get stuck so much in that mindset. And it's a death knell online because you're always having to adapt. I think you've got to adapt in any business. But here online, you've really, really got to adapt. I'm reminded of when I was a um, counseling psychologist in Tallahassee, Florida for years. And in the 80s and the first part of the 90s, it was great because it was a state government town. People would come in, pay their twenty dollar go co payment, co payment. You'd fill out a little form, put it in a pile. In the, the week, you'd send in that pile to Blue Cross Blue Shield in Jacksonville, and a couple weeks later, you got this big check. Is this a great country or what? And then damaged, I mean managed care came along. I love the quote about managed care in uh, what is that movie? As good as it gets by Helen Hunt. She's right. Um, and it started cutting people's income by a third. And then the next year, a third. And what happened was all these therapists were going out of business or had dramatically reduced incomes. And some of them were going to fight it and do this coalition against the insurance companies. Good luck with that. Um, some of them just went under. What I decided to do was adapt. I started speaking. I started writing a, a weekly relationship column in a newspaper, which led to this whole big, great, wonderful online world for me. Okay. And so many people, but we've always done it this way before, and they went under. Okay? That will happen so much online, too. You've got to be able to adapt. One of the things to adapt to is what you're seeing right now, this live video casting. 
It's the next big thing, good thing to adapt to. So those seven words are, we've always done it that way before. So if those are the words to avoid, the seven words of the perpetually unsuccessful, what do you say instead? Well, how about these three that get better as we go? First one is, can we do that? Coming up with a new idea, looking at something different, doing something different. Can we do that? Now, I'm going to change that question, can we do that, by only one word. I'm only going to add one word. It makes the question very, very, very much more powerful. Again, pens, keyboards, ready? Okay. So change can we do that to how can we do that? How can we do that? One little word. Ups the power. Now, let's up the power exponentially using the same sentence. Can we do that? How can we do that? And now, I'm going to give you four. So I said three. I'm going to give you four. Always over-delivering. Always bonusing. Told you three. I'm going to give you four. Okay? Instead of how can we do that, in how many ways can we do that? So we've gone from can we do that to how can we do that to in how many ways can we do that? Whatever it is, it is it, whatever it is, doing things differently. Okay, not trapped in the we've always done it that way before. The seven favorite words of the perpetually unsuccessful. Now, it, when you practice those words, can we do that? How can we do that? In how many ways can we do that? That leads to a really great question. And this is the question I believe the perpetually successful ask over and over and over again. And you've got to be willing to fall on your face. You've got to be willing to fail. You've got to be willing to fail and fall on your face sometimes in public to ask this question. Okay? And the question is this. Again, pen ready? Keyboard ready? Not both. You don't want to type on your keyboard with your pen, but either pen or keyboard, key, keyboard or your keyboard. This is your keyboard with wings. Your keyboard to uh, to write this down, to capture this, okay? The question is, what would happen if we did so-and-so? What would happen if we tried this? What would happen if and fill in the blanks. And so you try things. That's how you learn new software. That's how you learn new programs. That's how you discover new ways of doing things, going an inch wide and a mile deep into your niche and going deeper, right? And you discover new things and you create new things. What would happen if? So my challenge is for you to ask those questions. In how many ways can we do that? And what would happen if we did so-and-so? It's a whole lot better than, well, we've always done it that way before, right? Because usually the perpetually unsuccessful whine, that's why it's the seven favorite words of the perpetually unsuccessful. We've always done it that way before. Instead, in how many ways can we do that differently? And what would happen if, okay? Now, I'm going to use that right now to demonstrate how you can do this, okay? What would happen if? You could create multiple Kindle books with just three hours of overall effort. I'm not talking about three hours in a row, but overall, three hours of effort. What would happen if you could create unique, best-selling, multiple Kindle books with just three hours of effort? I know people that take weeks and months to create one Kindle book, sometimes a year. That's nuts. What would happen if, what would happen if you could create multiple Kindle books with just three hours of effort. Well, guess what? That is the topic of this week's Results Now webinar. And here we are. Did I put, whoop, might want to put that right side up, Jeff. There we go. Write that down, resultsnowwebinars.com. That will lead you directly to the sign-up for how to create unique, best-selling, hot, multiple Kindle books in three hours flat. Okay, my buddy and uh, colleague Jim Edwards is going to show you exactly how to do that. He's done it. I've done it. I've got students that are doing it. I want you to do it because then you can become prolific. 
Then, thank you, Dean, for that. Appreciate how you guys always put the, uh, the URLs in there. You can also put the quotes from the things we're talking about, too. Thanks, Dean. That way you can become prolific. That way you can easily create a Kindle series, which is one of the best ways to make that a profitable thing. And it can make the 20th of every month a really happy day. What happens on the 20th of every month? Well, when you're selling Kindle books with any regularity, that's the day Amazon sends you the money. It's wonderful. It makes the 20th a happy day. I want the 20th to be a happy day for you. And not only that, okay, you can take those Kindle books and using Amazon's Create Space and turn those into traditional books too. Right? And the thing we're going to share with you on this webinar is going to blow you away is that whole notion of how long does my book need to be? We're going to blow you away with the answer that's going to even further multiply exponentially the number of books, the number of con amount of content you're able to get out there, both for the profit of cash and the profit of traffic and new people in your community. Now, some people are already asking, and I know that you are, where's Chubby today? Well, he came to me over the weekend and he said, things are getting a little stale, Jeff. I'm always showing up in the same places. I want you to place me in different areas. I want to show up differently on your show. Some of you have noticed that right over this shoulder is there Chubby hiding in the bushes. That's where he wanted to be today. He wanted to be in the bushes saying hi to you. So he's not lost. Those of you that are going to be with me in Atlanta at the NAMS conference this coming weekend get to meet Chubby in person. Insiders have a surprise from Chubby. Anyway, everybody will get to meet him this weekend. All right. So invite you to go to resultsnowwebinars.com. The link is right there in your chat and will be down below here when we finish this up. So forget about those seven last words. We've always done it that way before and change them to, in how many ways can we do that? And what would happen if we did it that way? And get ready for the results, folks. I think you're gonna like them. So thanks for hanging out with us. You've got lots of choices online now, folks, and you chose to be with us. Blah, you chose to be with us. And we're always honored by that. I see my buddy, Mike Stewart on here. Aren't you proud of me, Mike, paying attention to you with the whole framing we got going on here? We're not showing the ceiling like we usually do, like way up there. Here we go. Uh, we got the framing right. So um, give me some applause for the framing or some hearts or whatever it is you can do here in Facebook. And Mike, I see you listening. Thank you for your patience while I learn how to frame the shot. All right. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about template Tuesday, where we deliver unto you a template about something you do all the time to make your life easier. There's Dean giving me the clap here um, because we did well. And it'll be story time with Jeff. And I'm going to share with you on story time with Jeff my, bo my most embarrassing moment as a parent so far. Okay, 20 years ago. Still the most embarrassing. All right. And for those of you listening to the audio podcast, wondering about this chubby stuff and other things, you can always see the video cast, the video version of this live video cast over on the blog at jeffherring.com. So thanks, folks. Go use this stuff and we'll see you soon. Now I have to reach forward and turn this off. For those of you that are doing these things, the reason I do that, sign off, smile, and then talk a little bit, is if you cut it off too soon, it cuts off what you're saying in mid-sentence. So now we've just chatted a little bit, and it's plenty fine to cut it off. Okay, bye.